So continuing on where we left off, we need to remember that when we're working with these trig identities, that we're really just working with things that we've worked with in the past. We can apply those same algebraic properties to them. So we may need to factor. We may need to uh, find common denominators. We may need to find reciprocals. We need, we need to simplify. Oh, no, I'm sorry. And away we go. Okay? So if this is cosine squared of x minus 1, this looks just like something like y squared minus 1. Right? How would we factor y squared minus 1? How do we factor y squared minus 1? y plus 1, mi y minus 1, right? This is a difference of squares. So we need y, the square root of the first plus the square root of the second and the square root of the first minus the square root of the second. So this is no different. Cosine squared minus 1 is, follows that same pattern. So we'll need a cosine of x plus 1 and a cosine of x minus 1. Okay, square root of the first plus the square root of the second, square root of the first minus the square root of the second. Of course, if your signs are changed, that's okay. As long as you have one positive, one negative. All right, well, how are we going to, bless you, factor sine squared u minus 3 sine u minus 10? So if it helps you to think about this as being x squared minus 3x minus 10, do that substitution. Okay, you're going to see in calculus next year something called u substitution, where we substitute uh, things in and then differentiate and uh, integrate based on that. So how would we factor this? Five and two, x and x, x and then negative five and. Uh, positive 2. That gets us two factors of 10, of negative 10, that subtract to become a negative 3. So how is sine squared of u minus 3 sine of u minus 10 going to factor? Yep. So if it helps to Write it as something familiar. Do that. It's a good strategy. Okay? All right. This is a mess, though, because this is a secant squared minus a tangent minus a 3. So this is something like an x squared minus a y minus a 3. So it's not going to factor as it is. So what suggestions do you have for me? We could do a 1 over cosine squared t minus a sine over cosine of t minus 3. That would be a good strategy. Okay? We're going to substitute in maybe the reciprocal. Okay? Other suggestions? Okay, we could use reciprocals, but there might be a more elegant way. What is secant squared? It's been a few days since we saw it, right? This is the opposite of the reciprocal of cosine. But remember, we have those trig identities. The first one we have to remember is the sine uh, squared of x plus cosine squared x. And so secant squared is 
1 plus tangent squared. Is that going to help us? See how it's nice that we're getting only tangents here? The other suggestion would have gotten us 1 over cosine squared and then a sine and a cosine. Notice that we still have two different trig values, but this way we only get one kind of trig value. One trig function. So let's simplify this to tangent squared t minus tangent t minus 2 now, right? Because a positive 1 and a negative 3 will get me a negative 2. Rachel, let's put it away, please. Now, do we know how to factor x squared minus x minus 2? Negative 2 and a positive 1, right? So, how will this factor? So it will be a tangent of t plus 1 and a tangent of t minus 2. Is that making sense? So this one we couldn't go straight into it. Thank you, sir. Okay. So far so good? All right. We don't have to put the secant back in it. No, nope. all we did was substituted secant squared is the same thing as 1 plus tan tangent squared of t. And so substituting that in, they're the same thing. It's, a, it's an identity. We haven't changed it other than its appearance. Okay. All right. So they can ask us to rewrite things so they're not a fraction. So don't let the fact that it's a trig function scare you off. If I asked you to rewrite 1 over x minus 1, so it's not a fraction, how can we, what can we do to help clear that denominator or make Potentially multiply by x plus 1, right, in the denominator, okay? And the reason that we're doing this is we're trying to make a 1 or something like it down here, okay? So let's take the 1 over the secant of x minus 1, and let's multiply it by secant of x plus 1, because once we have an identity, a secant squared minus 1, that might simplify. Okay? Let's do the same in the numerator, though, because we, in order to be um, follow the rules of algebra, if we're multiplying the denominator by something, we have to multiply the numerator by the same thing. So we're truly just multiplying by the net effect of 1. Okay? So we'll get a secant of x plus 1 in the numerator, and a secant squared, x, outsides go away, insides go away, and a minus 1 in the denominator. But what is the secant squared of x minus 1 equal? Did everybody get one of those little sheets, those little quarter sheets on Monday? I know some of you are gone. Everybody get a little gold thing like this? Okay. So tangent squared plus 1 is secant squared, right? If the tangent squared of u plus 1 is the secant squared of u, then the secant squared of u minus 1 will be equal to tangent squared of u. OK? 
Okay, so far so good? Okay, so that's going to become secant of x plus 1 over, and that's the tangent squared, Now, we're still trying to make it not have fractions, no denominators. Okay? Three plus one over four. Is that the same thing as three over four plus one over four? Yes. So whenever you have two things added in the numerator, you can split them out. Okay? That means that we can call this a secant of x over tangent squared of x plus 1 over tangent squared of x. Haven't lost anybody so far, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to get rid of this guy in the denominator. Okay? And to do that, we're... Because the problem is, if you have, okay, back to this kind of thing, okay, if I had 4 over 3 plus 1, is that the same thing as 4 over 3 plus 4 over 1? So this is 4 over 4, which is 1, right? But 4 thirds plus 4, 1 and a third plus 4 is certainly not going to be the same thing, right? So and I should have started with that. I should have led with that. So we can't split this up into 1 over this minus 1 over that and try to simplify. Okay. So the laws of fractions say that if you can get a single entity in the denominator, then you can split whatever's in the numerator off into two separate fractions. Okay. So how can we make this into a single unit? by putting something potentially up here so that we can split them off and have each one over a common denominator. And that's where we're going with it. And we're not there yet. Okay. So when I saw that we had a secant of x minus 1, I'm saying, wait a minute, I can make a secant squared of x minus 1 if I multiply it by the conjugate of it. Okay secant of x plus 1 to get to here. Okay, that introduced that fraction, that, that, that um, sum in the numerator. Okay, which was good because now I have a single entity down here. Okay, when it's no longer some, a sum or a difference, and it's a single thing, now I can split it off into two separate parts. Okay, the cool thing about this one is we all recognize this. What's this one going to be? 1 over tangent squared is cotangent squared. Okay, so we're almost there. Okay, the only thing we have to do is deal with this now. Okay, well, what is the secant? It's a reciprocal of cosine. So this is a 1 over cosine. And how can we rewrite tangent squared? as two, two um, trig functions. Tangent is equal to sine over cosine, right? So we'll have sine squared over cosine squared. OK? So I don't like having a denominator in the denominator, right? When I flip it and bring it to the top, I'm going to take the cosine squared over sine squared. We'll make these guys cancel. But if I'm multiplying the denominator by that, I have to multiply the numerator. Okay. So cosine is going to cancel, right? And we're going to have just a single cosine over sine squared. <laughs> Getting closer. Okay, so this is a 
simple cosine of x over sine squared plus that tangent, the, the cotangent squared. And I'm rapidly running out of space. So this was 1 over cosine. This was sine over cosine squared over cosine squared. So 1 over cosine multiplied by cosine squared over sine squared when we bring it to the top makes the cosines cancel and I'll have one left and a sine squared down here. Okay, but we still don't quite have our fractions gone, do we? This guy's good. I'm going to come over here. The 1 over tangent squared is now going to be um, cotangent squared. Okay? So cosine of x over sine squared x plus cotangent squared. We're still very, very close. But we still have a fraction. So what is sine squared? Sine squared plus cosine squared is 1, right? So 1 minus cosine squared, okay? So we have a cosine of x over 1 minus cosine squared of x. plus the cotangent squared of x. I'd love to. I'd love to cancel out one of those cosines, but again, because we have a sum in the denominator, we can't. <laughs> but, I, let, better yet, let's do it this way, because this isn't going to help us. But let's split these out. What is, we can say this is the cosine over a sine times 1 over sine. Okay? So cosine of x over sine of x times a 1 over sine of x. Okay? What is cosine over sine? Cotangent. What is 1 over sine? Cosecant. And we're done. That was a lot of work for not much. <laughs> there could be something like this on the assignment. Yes, if they say... entirely possible. Okay? A lot of work for not a lot of, of um, um, sense of, of uh, success. <laughs> exactly. Okay? But the key here is realizing that once you, if you have a, a sum in the numerator, we can split it amongst the denominator. But if we have a sum in the denominator, we cannot split them out. Okay? All right. I think I may have one more example or two. I can't remember. Okay? So this shouldn't be a big stretch because we've now been doing some substitution here. Okay? To be able to see these, we've, we've done some substituting to make things look more normal. So use the substitution x equals 3 times the sine of u defined between 0 and pi over 2 to express the square root of 9 minus x squared as a function of u. So what are we doing here? Yep. 
Yep, we're plugging in 3 sine u for x. So we're going to have a 9 minus 3 sine u squared, all under the radical. So this will be 9 minus 9 sine squared u under the radical. What do they have in common? 9 becomes a 3 once it comes out, but what do they have in common first? GCF? Before we take it out of the radical, though. You guys are one step ahead. We have 9 times 1 minus the sine square root of u, right? If we factor that 9 out of both of those. And now we're free to take the 9 out if we want to. Not quite, because it's 1 minus it, okay? So it's like saying, can we just say um, we have 25 minus 3 squared, okay? Try this again. And I just cancel out that three, that square from the 3. Okay. Okay. So what do these two guys have in common? A 9. So if I take a 9 out of this one and a 9 out of this one, it's coming out to the front. And I'll have a 1 and then just an understood 1 times the sine of u, sine squared of u. Okay, because if I had a 9 minus 9x nine squared, how would I factor that? I want to take the 9 out. Okay. All right, now, what is 1 minus sine squared of x, or what sine squared of u? That's cosine squared. So if I had the square root of 9 times the cosine squared of u, now we're welcome to take out our, our square roots. What is the square root of 9? What's the square root of cosine squared of u? Okay. Because it was yet yeah, 1 minus the sine squared. So sine squared plus 1, or sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So if I want to get the... Um, cosine to the cosine squared to one side, I would take the cosine to one side and the sine squared to the other. Okay. All right. Everybody good with that? Okay, so you have the assignment. The same assignment from Monday. If you have questions, I can go over them, what you've worked on thus far. And we're making it a two-day assignment because it, there were a lot of notes, but I wanted you to have some time to practice. Yep, I will go back one slide. <laughs>